In the book, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, Dr. Jekyll is a scientist and a doctor who is very fascinated with this idea of the two personalities within a person, the good and the evil. Now, as the story unfolds, Dr. Jekyll uh, eventually makes this potion, like a concoction that transforms him into the sinister Dr. Edward Hyde. Now, as we get deeper in, he's able to transform into this character with relative ease, but when he's in that mode, he is uh, committing debauchery and he's engaging in all types of crimes. Now, over time, as the story progresses, however, he finds that it's more difficult to transform back into Dr. Jekyll, his, his normal self. I think this story is a great illustration of uh, the relationship that the ego has with the shadow self. Carl Jung once stated that everyone has a shadow and that the less it is embodied in an individual's life, the darker and denser it becomes. In other words, within each of us lies two parts of the whole. This person uh, that we really are versus this person that we want to become. The shadow is the blind spot of our psyche. So it represents like the, the weaknesses that we have, our repressed ideas and desires, uh, our shortcomings. It's a byproduct of this tension between who we are and who we want to become. Paul in the Bible in Romans 7 says, I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. Now, if I do what I do not want to do, it is no longer I who do it, but the sin that is in me that does it. So you can see here that this is a struggle of every man and woman. This isn't isolated to specific people, right? It's like, this is even applicable to the most like, holy, righteous, spiritual people. So one of the easiest ways to identify the nature of the shadow is, uh, it's actually very simple. All you have to do is look into the lives of those around you, your family, your friends, and figure out um, what you like the least about them. So knowing when and how you project is really the first step in understanding the traits of your own shadow. Think of projection as like a mirror that shows you um, overexposed imagery. By seeing that which you dislike in others, you inversely see that which you dislike within yourself. So then now what? Do we you know, continue to live at the mercy of this unconscious and vile self? Nah fam, within the chaos of the shadow lies your potential to unlock your ideal self. Carl Jung states that first one has to accept and take seriously the existence of the shadow. Second, one has to become aware of its qualities and intentions. This happens through conscientiousness, attention to moods, fantasies, and impulses. Third, a long process of negotiation is unavoidable. So this first step is just realizing that the shadow is a part of all of us. Whether we want it to be there or not, it still actively uh, influences how we see ourselves and how we see the world. So why can this be so hard to identify? Well, think about you as a parent. A good parent does everything that he or she can do to um, not suppress that child's shadow. Because if you think about it, it's like every parent wants their kid to be forceful, assertive in some way. They want their voice to be heard. You know, you want to integrate within them this capacity for aggression, especially in the face of injustice. But we still learn suppression from an early age, right? It's like, think about a school teacher reprimanding, you know, a young boy for causing a ruckus in the classroom. I remember in school growing up, one of the ways that teachers would discipline their students, they would uh, make them sit out of recess which for those of you guys that don't know what recess is, it's basically like a 30 to 45 minute block in the school day that students take the kids outside to play on the playground, play sports, you know, just like kind of socialize. But it's like, why would you make a kid isolated in that time where he's like supposed to be bonding with students, right? A lot of times kids really aren't misbehaving in a class. It's like, you just can't expect them to behave normally eight hours a day when they're around, you know, 20 to 50 other students in a classroom. So why is isolation the solution to a normal developmental state of behavior? Formative years are the most important. And when you institutionalize children for the sake of maintaining a politically correct educational environment, you sabotage a child's ability to learn self-awareness. 
And that is really where the problem is. Because what happens when you seek to eliminate the consequences of nature in adolescence, you create an artificial environment that includes only winners. And when every child gets a gold star and this competitive nature that they have is beaten out of them, you have nothing more than a very fragile, impressionable young child that is gonna be shocked once reality hits them upon their graduation into adulthood. The irony of the education system is that it not only under prepares you for the responsibilities of adulthood, it actually lies to you about them. I see a common struggle, especially amongst young men, that due to this narrative that encompasses like oppressive patriarchy, they've totally rejected their innate side to deal with ambition and to deal with aggression. This better part of striving masculinity has been backhanded for the sake of not ruffling any feathers, not hurting little Jimmy's feelings over there in the corner, even though he deserves it and it's it's becoming very problematic maybe you're a woman that's watching this right and you've been raised in an environment that criticized you for having any opinion that was contrary to whatever everyone else was saying or believing in so now you've adopted this overly uh, agreeable personality. Maybe you felt like you were never allowed to show weakness because you felt like you always had to be strong. Whatever the nature of your shadow is, know that accepting it loosens its power over you. Really the best thing that you can do to transcend the shadow is through self-awareness. Any environment that allows you to be present with your thoughts, right? Um, maybe like journaling, staring at a candle, wh whatever it is, that works for you, but it's, it's very important. The next thing would just be to demonstrate self-compassion. You have to view the shadow as kind of like this wild and dark horse. How do you tame a horse? Well, you befriend it. You get it to do what you want by showing patience, having an unconditional level of acceptance. The actions that you take aren't gonna change the fact that the horse is still wild and dark, right? But instead of it working against you, now you've got it working for you, which is the final stage of this whole thing, which is shadow integration. Shadow integration is the end result of your self-awareness and your inner work where the unconscious becomes conscious. So my closing words here would just be know that the course of your reality is directly tied by your willingness to engage the shadow. So make it a habit to regularly engage all aspects of yourself, not with judgment, uh, but with acceptance. Anyways, guys, that is all I've got. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to reach out should you have any questions. And thank you again.